pretend. Look at that, the ring in my glasses. The ring bringing you in. And it's about the ring, of course. It's about the boxing ring, isn't it? And the business of boxing. With um, Steve Smith's rambling review, reviews very happily producing this for the law. Yes, yes, indeed. Law. Live audio wrestling. Marvellous. Now, we're round to round 10. It is getting into the championship rounds. And really, I should have started to have been a little bit better around round five. Well, actually, I could have started at round one and gone all the way through. And then, therefore, round 10 might have been, well, you're doing really well. At the moment, what my corner would be saying is, we do need these rounds, you know. We do need all the, you, you might need to get a little bit better than you currently are. My hair's standing up a bit, isn't it? Quite lustrous, though, today, I find. I'm having this cut tomorrow. It will be more of a laughing cavalier. <coughs> <coughs> yes. So, I've got these bits, you see. They've got to go because they interfere with the laughing cavalier. And you don't want to interfere with the laughing cavalier. It carries a jail sentence. Now, I'm on to round ten. And uh, the other rounds have been all right. But this is the one that I really think that I can move up there and really do something special. I, I can't, but I think I can. Yes, so uh, I'm going to try. Anyway, I'm going to try my very best to do that. So let's start with a bit of boxing of boxing this week, because we always like to, don't we? I talk about the business of boxing, the business of boxing with Steve Swift. That is who I am. It says so on my passport, so it must be true. Now, the boxing of boxing this week is finally covered by Jesse Bam Rodriguez versus Estrada. Now, the business of boxing is covered by the young gun, Jesse, and the old stager champion, Estrada. And Jesse Rodriguez, lest people forget, has been brought on beautifully. If you look at his list of um, opponents, he, his, his fight, his compu box details, uh, or box rec, box rec, isn't it, details, then you wouldn't be seeing that many names. You might be familiar with some of them, but you wouldn't be seeing that many names of a sort of, oh, he fought him, did he? Blimey. No, the, the one that really will stand out, apart from Estrada's, would be Sonny Edwards. And he dispatched him very well. He is a great boxer and he's been brought on beautifully. And this is a lost art in the social media world, I think, which says, oh, you know what? You need to fight him. There's loads of people saying you need to fight him. And so promoters saying, well, it's, it sounds like we need to fight him. I mean, it's a bit of a step up, but social media want us to fight. Oh, he's lost. And now he won't really be successful or as successful as we might have liked. Oh, glory be. That happens a lot these days. Now, I'm not saying that um, Bam Rodriguez fought journeyman or anything like that, or even that journeymen exist. Oh, we're not saying that, are we? Because they probably don't. Or maybe they do. They do. But we're not saying that. It's just that you pick your opponents, don't you, to make your charge your boxer look good and to make him feel good as well or her feel good and to move on in their in their um career so someone who challenges you need challenges at certain times you need someone who's not going to be too difficult you need someone who fits well and matches well and he's been beautifully handled with bam rodriguez and you know what he was ready he was ready to fight us Estra estrada now estrada uh, Estrada rather than Astrada, Steve. Estrada. Mm -hmm. So, Estrada wants to put his head here and start wailing away. He wants a phone box. And if he gets a phone box fight, he will make an international call throughout the whole of those 12 rounds. He didn't get the chance. Not with Rodriguez, who was really fast, in and out, and was also coming at different angles. And Estrada was thinking, A, how do I get in? And B, where do I know where those punches are coming from? This is the puzzle he set. I keep wobbling on about puzzles, don't I? That's what happened. Now, it allowed Rodriguez to show how good he was. He put 
Estrada down um, with an uppercut. That's how, because he was standing right in front of him. Early doors, he was standing right in front because I think he thought, I can handle what's coming here, I think. So he put him with an uppercut. And I think he got a straight left that really put him down. But that's the first time Estrada had ever been down. He was down later on as well. After coming back and putting Rodriguez down. I think it was in the sixth. Was it the seventh that he was that it finally ended? But in the sixth, he came out. And I think Rodriguez just lost concentration. And he put him down with a straight jab, really. That had a Rodriguez off balance. He got up straight away. And then in the seventh, of course... He hit a, I mean, it was presaged, presaged, there's the word, presaged, by um, a shot on the ropes to the body that made Estrada wince. For the first time in the match, in the fight, he winced. And then very soon after that, or at the end of the round, really, around seven, he was, he got a sick left right to the solar plexus. Uh, no, actually, it was to the side. I can't have a kidney shot just off. He went down hard and there was no way he was getting up. And it was a brilliant fight. Great for the boxing and boxing. Business of boxing covered. Ding, ding. Great. Now, that's the boxing of boxing covered. I'm trying to be quicker this week because I don't want to ramble on too much. The business of boxing. I'm going to leave RG to the end because Ryan Garcia is going to be here, folks. Ryan Garcia is always here, folks. He's always here. So... The first thing we're going to get is Nate Diaz, who is fighting Jorge Masvidal. And he's angry because a YouTuber or some influencer or something like that um, asked him a an impertinent question, apparently, in the press conference, which is something like, when you get knocked out, you're going to give up. And apparently, it's reported by people, you know, people, that Nate Diaz, his friends or his partners or whatever in his team in entourage chased him down well I mean the thing is you, you're an MMA fighter or you were you're a boxer or you're not you're neither one thing nor the other I think that actually you really have some other questions to ask yourself rather than getting angry about a question like that or are you not really at ease with yourself so a question like that which is not like What's the, you know, what's the square root of 262? Um, oh, you impertinent bleeder. I don't know maths or something like that. Or I've got some pictures of you in the gym and you look terrible or, you know, that kind of thing. Something that you could laugh off if you were more confident, perhaps. I don't know what the point is of this Mass Vidal fight apart from that. But he didn't show that he was very happy. And that might be to do with his current situation rather than anything else, I suspect. Now, meanwhile, Carl Froch. Now, Carl Froch, the Cobra, who of course retired some years ago, and does commentary and all that, bears all the hallmarks, in my view, as being someone who wants to get back in that ring, but actually feels that he can't. And what he's done at the moment, what he's done is, he said that he's had a WhatsApp spat with... Anthony Joshua, look at that, I've got a bit of a ball paint there, look at that, it's thin, thin, the hair's thin, when you get to my age, that's what happens, it looks like a lustrous thatch, I do very well, these haven't got a comb over, but it's kind of a comb over, I suppose, blimey, that's a terrible idea, a comb over, never thought I'd have one of them, anyway, back to Carl Frotch, who hasn't got a comb over, he's got so much hair, he could afford to shave it, as I can't, because it would never grow back, I don't think, now, he said that AJ, Anthony Joshua, has sent him some rather nasty um, WhatsApp messages. And he's shown some of them, right? Now, the WhatsApp messages, they're just, I mean, they might be, they might be absolutely real. And AJ, Anthony Joshua, has got a lot more on his plate than Carl Froch, might be actually sending him messages. And, and it's messages like, something like, you know, why don't you, why are you saying this to me? Because I believe it. Why don't you come in? Why don't you meet me and sort it out? Yeah, I, th I think he calls him a bellend. It's blocked, blacked out in the report. I think he calls him a bellend. <laughs> I mean, really? So I don't think that's a kind of, I, I don't, I mean, and it says at the top, Anthony Joshua knew too. So, you know, he's had several numbers and he's given them all to Carl Fratch because they're such great mates. And, um, and now he's started to abuse him on WhatsApp. 
Do you think it's happened, everybody? Do you think so? I don't know. I really don't know, but it has a lot of hallmarks of, I want the attention! Give it to me! <laughs> Carl Froch was a great fighter. Fantastic fighter. And this is... Oh, dear. You've got to look at your legacy and what you're doing now, which affects your legacy. Because that's what people see. Now, it's a, it's a five-minute or even a five-second... Um, culture in it on on social media so you might want to think about the way you'll look right now because people are forgetting what you did then which was fabulous fabulous okay Manny Pacquiao retired some years ago he fought last in 2021 he hasn't said he wants to come back he didn't have a good time when he last fought the the, the thought was okay it's over for me Mauricio Suleiman wants him to fight again. He's 45 years old. And Mauricio Suleiman wants him to fight again. Now, what it says is, well, we don't have any great stars, do we? So actually, let's get stars from the past. Yeah, absolutely. Why don't I get the ghost of Sonny Liston in, shall I? Yeah, let's get Nassim Hamed in. I mean, I need to cut a bit of weight, maybe. But let's get him in. Oh, yeah, great. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see Mike Tyson fighting at 57, is he? Is he my age? 58? And I don't want to see Manny Pacquiao fighting at 45 when he got, when he didn't do well the last time he was out. It, it, the three years will not have made him, I don't think, discover a great boxing talent and a great boxing desire that he didn't have last time but now he's found it <laughs> there's no way that's gonna happen is it no way on god's green earth why would you want it well pretty green yeah that i suspect but i mean he's not responded and why would you why would you i mean he's, he's earned his money he's done well it's over. That's fine. Don't try and tempt him back. Don't try and do that. It's not right, is it? And I don't want to see that as a boxing fan. It's the business of boxing, folks. And talking of the business of boxing. Okay, we've got... We've got... Ryan Garcia. RG. Now, two stories here. The first thing is... That apparently people are saying, oh, look at that. He looks bigger in training. He's been training. And some leaked pictures have come out. He looks a lot bigger. He's a lot musclier. Wow. Wow. He looks so much bigger. Well, he's not fighting, is he? So what's the point? It's not, you could do whatever you want. He's not going to get in a, in, a, in a boxing ring and fight for any kind of title or anything like that. Not anytime soon. It doesn't matter whether he's smaller or bigger. You know, oh, yeah, he's bigger in sparring, isn't he? Yeah, I saw him on the golf course the other day. His biceps look massive. And, yeah, I saw him buying cat food the other week. And his biceps were bursting out of his shirt. He looks a lot bigger when he was carrying that quart of milk. What? What's the point? This is the kind of click stuff that keeps you going, isn't it? But, you see, there is a cult around, not a cult, but, you know, a a boxing of a business of boxing cult around Ryan Garcia, who has also admitted this was last week, and I didn't get to talk to you last week, so I'm delighted to talk to you now. He said he's admitted that maybe the Osterine did get in my blood, and how was that? Well, I, I did see a, a, a container labeled Osterine, but I thought it said untainted supplements. So I took that because I thought, it, I mean, they look similar, don't they? Osterine and untainted supplements, you know, what it was that. No, what he said is that he had to cut weight. And we knew he, we know he, he didn't. We know he didn't for the fight. We know that. We know he was overweight. And he got some dietary supplements from a friend who he trusted. And there's no reason why he wouldn't trust him because his friend is called Scooter. Yeah, you can trust somebody to bring you stuff that's absolutely right for your diet with that name. Now, even, even if he was a registered doctor, 
Dr. Scooter. I still wouldn't trust him. Now, Mr. Swift, you, you, you need some colon surgery. And it, we, we've put you in with Dr. Scooter. It's okay. I'll handle the pain. No problem. I'm not going to... I mean, really, it doesn't sound trustworthy. Scooter, the name itself doesn't sound trustworthy. He might be. Let me say, the gentleman might be. But it just adds to the ridiculous na nature of this. It adds to the ridiculous nature of the brand. It's like... It's a farce, you know, it's it's like whose trousers are going to fall down next. It's that sort of thing. And you need to concentrate on your brand, on your brand, because that's all you've got now. For the next 12 months or so, that's all you've got. So you need to take a step back, think about what you want to do, run for president, because that's obviously what's next. And then, or senator on an independent ticket. And then come back to boxing when you can. But don't be doing this. You ain't got boxing to back it up now. And that will mean that the business of boxing could burn your business. Burn your business. That's like some kind of euphemism. Has like a nasty rash or something, doesn't it? And on that thought... Ooh. Ah. SolidFanClub.ca, the definitive collection of rock solid wrestling content. RockSolidFanClub.ca is your source for rock solid wrestling action from the past, present. Rock Solid Wrestling, Canada's leader in professional wrestling, presents RockSolidFanClub.ca, the definitive collection of rock solid wrestling content. RockSolidFanClub.ca is your source for rock solid wrestling action from the past, present, and future. Travel back in time with Rock Solid Wrestling's greatest hits. Buckle up and go on the road with Rock Solid. Get in-depth analysis from those who lived it with Rock Solid Versus. And follow the ongoing saga of Rock Solid Wrestling Unsanctioned. Get access to fan club exclusives and hours of Rock Solid Entertainment from your favorite superstar. Get behind the scenes. Get it all with RockSolidFanClub.ca. Real fans get it. sure to click that subscribe button click that like button and tell all of your friends share it with everybody we appreciate you just as much as you appreciate us so let's make this thing even bigger